Hey guys, Justin from ArcSight here. Today I'm going to be walking you through how turf professionals are using ArcSight to turn their designs into actionable plans in ArcSight in just a few steps. So you're just going to see me on my iPad. I'm going to be walking you guys through the tools, some of the most popular use cases for it, and how people are using it to be more efficient, save time, and close more deals all without leaving a job site. So ArcSight is a drawing tool at its core, but it's so much more than that as you get to learn how to use it. And hopefully by the end of this demonstration, you'll understand sort of why people are choosing it as the weapon of choice to help them close sales in the field. So as you're seeing here, I'm just on a homepage. You can scroll up and down, see a lot of different samples, things like that, that we're using. If I go into any sort of a project, I can create a new project. For this one, I'm just using one that I already have opened up. And I'm just going to create a new drawing. It's important to note that when you create a new drawing, you can start from a blank canvas. You can work off of a set of plans, blueprints, satellite imagery, photos that we're taking, any sort of source for origin that you want to use to help you save time. But at the end of the day, I wanted to just really start from nothing just to show you the power of ArcSight and how it can be used to go from nothing to something very quickly and efficiently. So if I choose blank, it's going to pop up and ask me precision levels. I usually keep mine around half an inch, but to each their own. If precision isn't that important to you, you can simply dial it down a little bit to allow it to be a little more, little more generic. So if I go ahead and create drawing, I'm just going to see a canvas now. The canvas is just like a digital piece of graph paper, right? So everything that you're doing today when you're drawing with pen and paper is not able to be done and captured digitally. So that way it's clean, neat, professional, and is able to be used for a plethora of different things, whether you're securing permits or presenting to a homeowner, anything in between allows you to be done with an arc site. So as I start out, maybe I want to start out with the footprint of a house. Now it's important to know that arc site is an infinite canvas. It can be miles wide or it can be all the way down to a 64th of an inch. So as I'm zooming in and out here, you're kind of seeing the rulers adjust on the top and side. It allows me to set a scale that I think is usable. So we'll go just over 100 feet or so total width. That should be enough for a house and a plot. And we'll just draw, start out by drawing the basis of a house, right? Just to give us an outline and a reference point on the property. So when you choose the wall tool, house are made of walls, that's what I choose. You can simply draw lines if you choose to, but I'm just going to go ahead and use the wall tool and start with the line segment. So as I draw with my finger on the screen, it's just going to create a line. Now it knows I'm trying to draw a straight line, so it's going to keep it straight. With the exact same tool, if you want to draw curves and arcs, you can, but rarely are wall or <laughs> walls of houses really curved like that. You can go ahead and make them that way if you choose to, but in this instance, we'll just keep it that way. Now, line's a line, but anything you do in ArcSight has data associated to it. It's an algorithmic tool. Um, which really just means there's data associated to each line, so ArcSight can read it later on. That'll become more important when we start talking about products and attributes here in a bit. So if I go ahead and I tap on the line itself, it's going to give me a dimension. So I drew it out to 42 feet 10 inches. Everything to ArcSight is drawn to scale. It's not hard to draw it to scale. You can simply go in here and say this is actually 62 feet, and then hit the green check mark, and everything's going to scale itself to size. So you see how that line grew out to 62 feet? Now I have an exactly to scale line. And just for the purpose of this, I'm just going to go ahead and finish off maybe what the footprint of this house looks like. You know, maybe the house is shaped something like this and it goes down and around, etc. Now, I drew a couple things there intentionally a little bit off just to show you some of the usability of the tool. These top, cor top left corner of the house most likely connects. So if I go ahead and I choose the edit tool and I hit extend, you can simply cross over any two lines. It'll snap them together. The top right probably doesn't have extra wall protruding into the backyard, so you can simply trim that piece off. Just one of the many tools with an arc site that allows you to be quick, easy, and accurate without sacrificing time or energy. So if I go through and maybe I want to notate a couple things just for visual sake, maybe I want to add a door, I want to go ahead and notate you know, where the garage is or where the driveway is going to go, you can go ahead and drag and drop those things into place quickly and easily and they snap right to those walls. That's all well and good, and it helps you understand the benefits of ArcSight, but what really matters is the next pieces with an ArcSight. So when you're using this to do synthetic turf installations in residential, commercial, sports establishments, it allows you to go through and do it in a bunch of different ways. I'll show you a couple different ways, but it's actually completely up to you how you want to use it within your workflow. Just know that the tool is very flexible and can be adopted in many different ways. I'm just going to show you the best practices that I've learned from working with turf professionals over the last four plus years. So if I go through here and I start and I want to draw out my backyard. Now, when I go to hit the draw tool, you'll notice a couple things that pop up. Continuous lines allows you to draw and continue to draw arcs, line arc, 
freehand even, where you can simply draw things freehand and it'll actually automatically turn it into an algorithmic shape, which is nice. And then you'll see the bottom one, which is the Measure with Mosher app. A lot of synthetic turf pros are using Mosher nowadays to capture those irregular measurements. And we integrate with tools like that, Bosch and Leica laser meters, any sort of device you're using to capture dimensions. We try to make sure that we work with it to support whatever workflow you guys like. So from there, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna draw out the outline of a backyard. And I'm just working in a figurative backyard, mind you. I'm not working off of anything real, I'm meant to just simply show you the actual workflow. So if I go ahead and I grab a perimeter product and it's got rebar and staples, it can be any sort of fastener, whether you use staples, nails, drive anchors, whatever it is, you can go through and build that into ArcSight. We will go through and build it with you. We've obviously got a library pre-built, but if you need to make some tweaks, it's actually very simple to do. And we've got a support team that assists with that as well. So if I go through what I draw out, maybe what the back of this yard looks like, I'm just dragging my finger around using that same tool I used earlier. And I'm going to draw kind of an irregular one. Anybody can lay out turf if, if the yard is perfectly rectangular. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I'm showing off the ability to make those quick, easy adjustments and still keep it extremely accurate. So now, as I draw that piece out of where maybe we're going to lay synthetic turf, we can go through and we can start to add things like our turf rolls. You can add things like putting greens, a lot of that stuff. But we'll start with the turf rolls because that's going to go into pretty much any job that you do. If I go through and I were to select a type of synthetic turf, say I choose basic, you know, um, Tacoma, and then I go ahead and I wanna draw out a rectangle. You can simply go through here and draw out and specify, yet again, that this is gonna be a 15 foot wide roll. And you can lay them horizontally, you can lay them vertically to each their own. I know that's kind of a heated argument in some cases, but if you go ahead and draw those out, you can go back and you can choose those pieces and you can extend them to where you want them to go. Now, when I zoom in, I'm doing it for a reason. The more you zoom in in ArcSight, the more finer control you have over the object and the less snappy it becomes. So the reason I did that is just to simply give me a little more control over it. So I have a 15 foot wide roll and I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this out and adjust it across everywhere that I'm going within there to make sure that it, that it fits within the, pro within the actual project scope, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing essentially all the way across and just snap my rolls into place. Now, this is important because what I'm doing is I'm actually creating a roll layout on site. You do have the ability to simply tap that back area, get a total square footage and have it convert to rolls, and then leave the design up to the installation crew or the tech that's actually putting it in. That's a total another option. I just wanted to make sure you knew that it can handle the design, the waste factor, everything, if that's the route you choose to go. But know that it's not completely um, locked and loaded into any one specific um, workflow. So if I go through and I'm just dragging these up now so we don't have all this extra waste. I've also got my dimension styles way too high so the numbers are way too big but that's something that's very easy to adjust um, and go through and change. So if I were to go in and tap on those sort of pieces of the puzzle um, you can go ahead and remove dimensions, add dimensions, whatever it is that you want to do with them um, and go in and just you know delete them out of there. Maybe you don't want a specific one for each one you can simply go in and tap on them and get rid of your dimensions across the board if that's important to you. For now, I'm just gonna leave them there just for a quick example, but you can go through here and build out whatever it is that you're adding out as you go. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish my roll layout here. Maybe I know I've got plenty of waste there, so I'm only gonna go this far on this one to try to be as accurate as possible within my design. So I created a really quick, easy turf layout. Now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna add in additional things like my seam tape and glue. Those are bundled together. You rarely use one without the other. And I'm just gonna simply place those along a few seams. I'm not gonna do every one just for the tedious process of it all, but I am gonna go ahead and adjust them down and just put a few of them in there for you. So you can see that. Now, there's another piece to the puzzle that a lot of turf pros use, which is our layers tool. So I've laid out turf because that's something that you're gonna to wanna to kind of give a visual of a client, but if you wanted to lay out things like, you know, your underlayment or your infill and you wanted to capture all those tonnages and, and cubic feet measurements, you can go ahead and create another layer um, for, say, underlayment. You can lock the first layer so you can't edit it. And you can go back into turf here and you can grab a very loud pattern. I'm going to grab the loudest one I have just for example sake. I'm going to choose pick internal point because then it's just going to automatically fill specific areas that I drew instantly. And then it's giving you a running total of square footage is in there, which is then going to convert to a tonnage, to a weight, or to a volume. And then when I go ahead and do that, I'm going to hit finish, and now I've got a very loud looking product, right? That's one thing that we run across all the time. But if you go ahead and you go back in here and you go back to, say, your first layer, you can turn visibility on that off. 
Now what's important to know about that is ArcSight is still going to calculate that when it comes to the actual bill of materials and the proposal we're going to get to in a few minutes, but it's not going to clutter up your drawing. It's going to allow you to be real quick, easy, organized, and professional. And that way you can control exactly what you present. The same thing with those dimensions that are cluttered up right now. All those pieces can be adjusted one by one as you're going throughout the process, right? And it's gonna come down to really finding a way that fits you and what you wanna present and what you wanna create. So I've gone through and I've created a lot of things around the turf piece, right? Maybe there are some unique aspects to this yard that I want an installer to know. I can simply tap the photo tool, little icon down here. I can tap wherever it is. Oops, let me unlock my layer there because I can't edit my layer because I had locked it. That's an important thing to do. That way you're not accidentally crossing things over. Go ahead and hit the photo tool. You can take a live photo or grab one from a photo library. I'm not in a yard right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one from a photo library and I'm just gonna choose this photo here. Looks like a backyard that could probably use some turf. Looks decently dry. It's got a large waste area, etc. right? So you can go into here. You can throw in any sort of annotations and things that are important. You can mark up photos. You can add those shapes or products right to photos and it'll allow you to create a nice little reference point for the installers and things that are gonna go out later so you don't have that miscommunication between sales and install, you know, that none of us ever actually have, but we all really do, we just don't admit it. And you can simply take that little camera and you can say, I was standing right here, facing this direction, took that photo. And you can do that over and over all around the project as many times as you need to allow you to capture as much data as possible and you won't have as many miscommunications within there. It's also really nice just to give the homeowner an idea of kind of what they're gonna see, where they're gonna see it, where you're gonna start on property lines, what trees you're gonna avoid, if there's flower beds, you know, all that sort of stuff. It allows you to give them really a visual of their own home and help visualize that project, thus helping you close the sale and move on, right? So that's all well and good. I created some basic turf layouts with some designs, right? ArcSight, even though these are just colors and shapes and lines, ArcSight knows everything that I drew. So if I tap this and I hit Create Legend, it's gonna drop in an actual legend of the product, exactly just the products that I used within the drawing and nothing more. So that way you're not having a huge product list on the side of every drawing that you don't necessarily need because it's not applicable to that job. As you go through that too, you may wanna add a lot of additional sort of finishing touches and things to your drawing, right? So if, maybe I wanna add in something like a title block to just add a little bit of professionalism to it. If I drop in a title block, it'll pop up, allowing you to fill in any sort of, you know, fields and things that are important to you. Maybe there's a job ID. Um, maybe you're out there on a specific date and you want to capture what date you were out there, etc. right? Now you can drop that in and you can say, hey, I'm just going to resize this so it fits over my drawing quite nicely. I'm going to go over here and grab my legend. I'm going to position this right here. And you end up with a really pretty finished engineered looking drawing really quick and easy, right? Now, maybe there's some additional things that you want to capture driveways, walkways. You know, you can go through and you can add sort of whatever finishing touches you want within there. If I go ahead and I draw in this sort of stuff, you know, there's going to be all sorts of ways to capture, you know, even these curved areas exceedingly easily to have a specific accurate measurement. Now, see, I drew this one a little off. All I can do is simply adjust it back over here, use that same trim tip tool I used earlier and go ahead and knock it down. So then you have a realistic looking drawing. Now, if you wanna get extra fancy, we've got all sorts of fill tools and things that allow you to go ahead and capture whatever sort of look you're looking for, whether that's concrete asphalt or a swimming pool, you can simply tap in those and you can end up with whatever sort of image you're looking for. Maybe you wanna take a lot of time and present something that looks like a piece of art. Maybe you just want a basic rudimentary drawing to pass on because your sales process doesn't include that. Whatever you guys prefer, you know, ArcSight can support you in that endeavor. Now, all we have now is a drawing, but what happened on the back end while I was drawing, ArcSight calculated all the material I needed to do that job. It calculated how much it was gonna cost. It calculates things like sales tax. It allows you to add things like brochures and things like that. Simply by hitting this estimate button right up in the top center, just to the right of the header, simply hit estimate. It's gonna pop up and ask you questions if there are accessories or different products that have multiple options. So I just have one in here just for simplicity's sake. I could have a whole laundry list if I wanted to. Maybe I want to use stainless steel staples instead of galvanized staples just because the area I'm in and I don't want anything to rust. From there, you can go over to the summary and it's going to break it down and tell you exactly what you need. It's going to tell me that I need 21.76 rolls of turf. It's going to tell me that I need 5,000 some square feet of deweeder, 74 tons of granite. All those conversions happen automatically as you go. So no more complicated spreadsheets and no more math because we all know, you know, salespeople don't adore math. I personally don't, but 
it saves another step and allows any sort of manual error to just get thrown out the window. So you don't have to worry about it. As you're moving through from there, you can go to the field data portion. Field data, this page is 100% custom. It's whatever you want it to be. If you want your guys to capture one field or 500 fields, we build them into ArcSight and you can build them into ArcSight yourself to capture whatever is important to you, right? So if I go through and I want to add my warranty, a sample scope of work and a release liability form for working on there, I want to take any sort of notes, like has a dog, and then I go, I tap what date and things I was on there. It's going to pre-fill today's date, of course. And then you can go capture any sort of notes. Um, so like heavy sun, reflection, onto turf, something like that, just to be aware. So that way, if anything's important for the installers to know of how to install something to avoid that sort of stuff so it doesn't melt on reflections or anything like that. You can capture anything else that's important if you want to know what sort of foundation there is, if you want to add brochures, color charts, all that sort of stuff just for a visual aid, you can absolutely do that. You can even specify payment information. Um, you can go in here and say, hey, um, we are going to take you know $20,000 as a deposit on this job. We're going to collect it via a check. We also process payments and and provide consumer financing through our lending partners. So if it's something you're looking for an all-in-one solution where you can actually process a payment while going through this process, we can handle that as well. So just let us know if that's something that interests you from there. Now, the next piece, there's a couple ways to do things. When you export it out, you can choose from materialists, you can choose from customer-facing proposals, you can choose from forms and permits. There's a lot of different ways to export the data. Not, shouldn't say export, just to use that data. You know, export sounds techy. You can just use the data in whatever workflow that you want it in, and then it makes it so it's a seamless, easy workflow for you. So if you go ahead and you hit customer proposal, and maybe I'm just going to choose a basic one that I have, a vertical one running north to south, and then it's going to take the data that I drew, it's going to back everything up so that way you have a record of everything that you had, no more losing documents, no spilling on things, no dogs eating your homework sort of scenarios, and it allows you to keep everything safe and sound. In now so that or in the cloud so that way there's no chance of any of that happening. Now what it has generated is an automatically signable sales proposal. We have our own e-signature capability you can send out. If that's something you're interested in, you can capture signatures directly on screen. You can send good, better, best proposals. There's a lot of different ways to handle it from here, but just know that ArcSight can handle really anything you can throw at it at this point. We've been around a while and helping turf pros for years, so we're happy to help you too if it's something we can do. So it'll show your logo, show who it's being evaluated for, who did the actual work, um, who did the actual estimate. You'll go down, you'll see the product lists. Mine are just all sample products. There's no individual pricing or anything listed on the proposal. I just have it being bulk priced. Just makes it harder for consumers to compare. But if you like to itemize all your stuff out, absolutely feel free. It's just a basic settings change on the back end and it'll show exactly how that sort of stuff's gonna work. It'll go through and show the actual job, how they're paying, any notes and things that you've taken. You'll go down, you'll see your drawing and design. If you want them to initial, say, each page, you could initial really anywhere. Within here, using the signature tool on screen, you can go down to the actual signature and say, hey, I wanna actually capture you know, this customer's official signature. Then they can go ahead and insert their signature within there. If you go down further within the project, you'll see any drawings with any markups and any notes and things that you took. So that way they have a full clear picture of everything that's happening on their property. If you go down any further, you'll start to see all those things I now attached. They can attach any sort of PDF format. I just have warranties, scope of work, release liability documents, and then things like color charts, right? So if you have different things that you want to show and let a customer choose from, you can even do something like that, and you can go into here and have them circle and say, hey, I'm going to go with this exact one. There's a lot of different potential uses from here. From then, you can send it on to them. If they sign it and want to move forward for it, simply hit this button up here, and you can share it with anybody and everybody, either within your own company, the consumer, uh, local municipality, if it's a permit type scenario. A lot of different ways to sort of send this stuff around. You can save it to Dropbox. You can text it even. A lot of different functionalities from there. So... ArcSight is one of those things that is what you make it. We've got a very good setup just right out of the box for turf, but if there's something that you need custom, absolutely just let us know. Hopefully this helps clear, clear some things up and shed some light on why people use us for what they use us for. And hopefully if we can help you make your processes more efficient, we get the chance to do so. So thanks for watching and let us know if we can help. All right, thanks.